Welcome to Spotlight Sessions, where we shine a light. What's your story? What does accessibility mean to you? What's your mission? Welcome all to Accessibility Spotlight Sessions, where we shine a light on incredible individuals and organizations and the work that they do. I'm your host, Josh Basil. I'm a C4-5 quadriplegic, paralyzed below my shoulders, and a power wheelchair user. I'm the community relations manager at Accessibility and a passionate disability rights advocate and trial attorney focused on breaking down barriers to access and inclusion for people with disabilities. Today on Accessibility Spotlight Sessions, we're joined by Harry Buddha Magar, a motivational speaker and adventurer. Welcome, Harry. Uh, thank you very much, Josh. Thanks so much for having me. I am excited for you to be on today's program. You have an incredible story, an incredible journey. So let's dive right into it. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your story. Uh, yeah, um, I grew up in Nepal up to age of 19. Uh, born in Kauset. Uh, went to uh, school barefoot. Uh, uh, and yeah, joined the British Army um, at age of 19 and came to UK from Nepal, uh, which is a completely different world. Uh, and I, I was very privileged to uh, go around the world as a part of my job um, and travel um, and learn about other people's culture and other people and other people's belief, other people's interest. And it was, it, it, it was great, but life doesn't go as a plan and sometimes it, uh, turns come com completely opposite way than you we, we, we planned. So yeah, that's what happened. But whatever happens, it happens for reason, and, and it happens for the um, uh, right thing. So yeah. <laughs> and you know, with with your journey, you're in, you're now a record-breaking mountaineer, an adventurer, and the first double double above the knee amputee to summit Mount Everest, which uh, that's in incredible. What, like what motivated you to take such an undertaking and such a challenge? Uh, there is a couple of things. First, first thing I was, uh, I grew up in Nepal looking at the mountain every day. <laughs> so, so, and also very from the very small age that, um, you know, we were educated that the tallest peak in the world is Mount Everest and it's in Nepal and, and uh, Mount Everest is, uh, uh, is simply it's a pride and symbol um, of Nepal. So we are very proud of that. Uh, secondly, um, uh, after my injury, I really, really struggled um, about disability because I wasn't aware of disability. So about one and a half or two years of my time, I just wasted, um, and, you know, uh, the way uh, we perceive in Nepal is uh, sometimes not very positive way. So uh, once I lost my both legs, I thought that, you know, um, I'm useless. I will be the burden of the earth and maybe I have done something wrong in the past so that this is why maybe I'm having this and I have to live the uh, rest of my life on a wheelchair and maybe I would need a carer uh, rest of my life. That's what I thought. <laughs> and once I start doing sports and adventure, that wasn't the case. Uh, and there's so many people. Once I was uh, start getting educated myself about uh, disability, <laughs> then uh, then uh, then uh, I thought that yeah, we need to do something about it. So other I don't want other people to suffer like myself. Uh, so they, if I knew that, then I wouldn't waste that long time, and I would pick up my life much quicker, uh, and you know make it much more meaningful, and possibly I will be in different level. Uh, than I am now. And that's so much of life is when you do have like a catastrophic event or just really any challenge that disrupts life, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to, to, to keep, to keep moving forward, but like with the right perspective and being able to see the world in a different way or experience the world in a different way, life moves on in, in beautiful ways. And you just, the, I know you're a true testament to this, but like, there's no mountain too high to climb. Um, because the fact is, is that if you're, if you have the willingness to try mm. and the right attitude can bring you beautiful places. And I'd love to know what, what did it feel like when you kind of reached the summit of Mount Everest? What, what, what did that feel like? Ah, oh, um, uh, 
uh, it, it is quite tough uh, on, on a summit day. Um, it took 25 hours from camp four to up and coming down. We're supposed to put a camp five, but uh, our logistic, you know, wasn't there. So we had to commit, you know, uh, I was working for the last five, six years and I've got a one day to make it or break it, you know, uh, so I couldn't give up uh, and we just carried on and yeah, there was lots of struggle. Uh, half of my team came back down from halfway, uh, not even halfway, but quite further down. And, you know, I I, I wasn't that ho hopeful to make it summit. And a couple of times I asked my guys to let's go back. And, you know, they said, yeah, we've got time. We can make it. Have we got, have we got, have we got oxygen enough? And they said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this 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 guy so uh, helped me, and we just kept going. And as we crossed the Hilari step, I was, you know, quite um, confident that even we're gonna die, we're gonna make it, <laughs> right? So uh, I, I knew that. And then once we got slightly higher, that the wind picked up, um, and the snow came with the wind, and uh, it was so cold, and we couldn't see much. Um, so uh, the visibility went uh, poor and yeah, about 100 meters down uh, the summit, time to time it, it clears it up, you know, and so you can see <laughs> and uh, you could see the you know, prayer flags and flying and in the wind <laughs> flapping <laughs> and you can say, oh, that's the summit. Um, and uh, I, I was very emotional at that time. Just many things were going around, going and on and you know, I just just cried it, and you know, you know, and in, in in your goggles and uh, with the mask on. And later, the, my tears start, you know, getting freeze. You can start, you know, it's cold, but still, you you, you feel it. <laughs> they, they, they're getting thicker. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, we went up, and you know, I was so so happy that yeah, we made it even. You know we're gonna we're gonna die. So I give high five to all the all of my surfers and give them a hug and cried like a baby. <laughs> it took it took a team to get up there, and the fact is you didn't have to do it alone. And anybody with any ability, whether you have a disability or not, light there's not a rule in there that you have to do life's adventures alone. It's actually more fun and easier when you got people that have your back and can push you and motivate you. But you're, you're, you got to be that captain that makes that decision on what direction you go, whether up or down, left or right. And I, I would love to know what advice would you give someone that's, that's, that's gone through a, a similar experience as you as a W amputee ab above the knee and they're just brandly newly injured. What advice would you give them? Uh, I think it's all about our mind. You know, uh, I didn't know that how my, my mind is powerful, you know, how much it, uh, you know, but I think it's all about mindset. It's a mind. If you set your mind, your body will follow. If you can run, you will run. If you can't run, you will walk. If you can't walk, you will crawl. If you can't, you will roll, right? Some ways you will keep moving and you will get there. I think some ways and even if that not then you will start using um, uh, you know kit and equipments and technology to get there you know uh, so so my uh, my logic was this before I climbed uh, Everest so my logic was that there's many things was going around in my mind uh, so uh, when I was thinking about climb Everest uh, when I was just, you know, skiing in Colorado and, you know, in Whistler in Canada and Alps in here in Europe. And I was looking at and I was thinking about Mount Everest. <laughs> um, and at the time I was thinking, okay, there's many impossible things that we made possible. You know, we didn't have a wing. Uh, and the right brother, some way, dreamed of flying. So we start flying now. <laughs> we can go to the another planet, right? And we couldn't able to run enough, uh, fast enough to explore the world. So we designed the things that can take us faster so that uh, we can fulfill our dreams and ambitions. Yeah. So uh, we designed that way in land and sea and sky. And now we can go to the another planet. So if we can go to the another planet, climbing with no legs must be, 
possible. This is was my logic. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, but it wasn't easy, but I think uh, it's it, it's possible. So, uh, yeah, I think as long as your gut says, your heart says that you can do it, you'll do it. <laughs> I love that. And with the disability community, there's so many misconceptions out there about people with disabilities. Uh, what's one that you wish or what's one that you wish you could change? Uh, so I think uh, this I want to change it a bit two ways, especially people that who have a, who don't have a confidence to do something in disabled community that I would like to give them a courage so that they can able to climb their own mountain, whatever mountain that they have got. It doesn't really matter. Uh, one thing. Uh, so and I think whole uh, whole human revolution is came from challenge whatever that we are having right now you know whatever we are using everywhere you, you look at down up and, and yeah. some point in time someone they challenge themselves they uh, worked hard they gave their time uh, and invested their money so we are privileged to using these things you know it didn't come free it didn't come easily maybe they felt many many times so we are <laughs> you know but they, they still uh, you know, keep working. They never give up, and we are having it. So, I think giving a courage to take opportunity is important. Uh, next thing is, it's very important that um, it's not just we aware ourselves, but make we also make aware other people as well. You know, like uh, our families, uh, our communities, and our authorities. And you know, we need to make you know, you know, when I always start climbing. I, I supposed to climb in 2018, but uh, Nepal government brought the new rules uh, banning that uh, uh, people with the double M uh, amputee and visually impaired, you know, can't climb over six and a half thousand meter mountains. So, so, so we had to go to uh, United Nations in Geneva and uh, Supreme Court in Nepal and overturn the rule. So, uh, so, 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 so. so, so you know that the government that who banned me um, now and last time when I came back down and tourism minister came and welcomed me at the airport <laughs> with about 100, 100 uh, you know, cameras <laughs> and many, many, many people. And on the same day, I was invited prime minister's office. Um, uh, I was sent a letter by um, uh, president. A vice president, House of Speakers, uh, all three major major political parties that you know. So so we need to change now. Now is time to take this make sure take action. You know they don't just change their mind, but they take action. So it is very important that we make awareness of ourselves, but also making awareness of others as well. Like say for for, for me, I don't know about uh, you are uh, you know using your mouth to control the computer. <laughs> You know, I'm not aware of that much. You know, one of my uh, my friends, she is uh, visually impaired, and and she said, "Can I touch your legs?" <laughs> she said, <laughs> "You know, it is, you don't know. You know, even within us, I think we need to be more more aware so that you know we can help each other, um, but also we can we have a courage to take a challenge, uh, and also." Other people can be able to support us. And when we are talking about support, I had 26 people on Mount Everest. So from uh, porters to kitchen assistants, kitchen chef, uh, to uh, low altitude porters, Sherpas, high altitude porters, uh, you know. Um, so yeah, I have a, uh, so everybody with some point we need help, you know, to run the country. The prime ministers and the presidents, how many ministers they have got, and how many PAs they have got, right? <laughs> so, so we all need a help to make something, to do something. We all need a help. So getting a help is, uh, you know, um, um, we shouldn't hesitate to ask for a help. And also, you know, sometimes we need help. Like say, when I was in, I just injured. I didn't know. I didn't know about my confidence and. There are lots of non-profits, my family, friends, and community who helped me out. And uh, I call it like that, it's like fast flow. Yeah? That, that's not going to leave for permanently. So, so the, those, those things, it's very te uh, temporary things. And 
after we cross that fast floor, we, we go other side, we are safe, then we can help other people to cross it as well. So, um, yeah, but I think we shouldn't hesitate to ask any help. That's awesome. Well, uh, as a trial lawyer, I'm, I'm an attorney and an advocate for life. I love your UN story, your Supreme Court story. It gets, you are a force. And, you know, online, you, you post on social media so many of your accomplishments, whether it's through social media channels, on websites. What are your, what are your thoughts about web accessibility? Uh, I think uh, accessibility, we are all different. So uh, different disability, we need a, um, a different things. But I think whatever our uh, your needs are, um, our families, communities, and the state uh, must um, help us because we can live. Maybe uh, our arms, our legs might be our weakness, right? So, but that doesn't mean that we can't do anything uh, you know you, you you are living you know you know you are yourself there you know controlling the computer by your mouth and and doing amazing job uh, you know have a look at um, you know um, St uh, professor stephen king right so uh, he was one, one of the best scientists in the world so as long as even our brain works we can do so much things so uh, accessibility means that, you know, we all are different and, and we just adopt our life. So, so my motto is life is all about adaptation and nothing's impossible. So as long as we adopt our life according to the time and situation, which is our situation, maybe my situation, I don't have legs. Maybe you, know, you can use your, use your arms and the legs, right? So, so, but as long as we, you are adapting your way and I'm adapting my way. And as long as we adapt, uh, it's a very, um, very commonly we are using it pretty much every day. If we have a, you know, cold, then we put a jacket on. And if it's raining, we put an umbrella on or raincoat on. Uh, very simply, we are adapting all the time. But we don't realize that how important this is, how powerful this is. And if we use it this properly, say, say, you know, sometimes I go on a wheelchair, sometimes I go on smaller legs. If I'm going to climb a mountain, I go in stubbies. And if I'm working, I, I use uh, I use a bigger legs with a mechanical means. And, you know, we just adapt according to the time situation, then we can able to make anything happen, I think, in my view. Well, I love, I love your motto. It's, it's such a great motto <laughs> to live life by, keep moving forward and overcoming challenges. And um, what, what advice would you give for online businesses wanting to do more around accessibility? Uh, I think um, one thing is I'm also not aware of um, everything. So, so I can't give advice, you know, I'm not expert on anything, 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 but make sure they have got in mind that there are disabled customers. Uh, some of them uh, who couldn't able to uh, operate some ways. So, and we are, if you see in the world, we are about uh, 1.3 billion <laughs> disabled people. <laughs> so that's about 12 to 15% of the world population, according to WHO. So, 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 so we are your customers. So, so make sure that if we, uh, if you want us to buy your products, then uh, uh, you can uh, make sure adopt, uh, ad adopt that we can able to buy some ways. That's perfectly said. And Harry, um, thank you so much for all that you do. And thank you so much for being our guest today on the Accessibility Spotlight Sessions. Thank you again. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And uh, yeah, but I get, uh, you know, meeting like yourself, I inspire myself. So, so, so it's, it, it's, 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 you know, we learn from each other. We learn from each other. We have healthy conversations and those just, uh, this can change the world. The more, the more we can learn. I agree with you. Yeah, absolutely. And to all of our guests, thank you so much for staying to the end of Accessibility Spotlight Sessions. Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button make sure to follow us at accessibility underscore community. And uh, Harry, before we go, what can you say your channels out loud where people can follow you? Uh, so it's a Hari Budamagar, so H-A-R-I, so Budamagar, uh, or just 
go and find maybe google google me on like uh the guys with no like climbing everest so hopefully you can <laughs> quite oh, easy, easily find me <laughs> find me out <laughs> i love it i love it so everybody again thank you for staying to the end and being on this journey with us and uh until next time everyone you take care bye bye Harry. bye everyone <laughs>